That region of the world called Southeast Asia is also known as the Indo-Chinese Peninsula. It lies between India and China. Nearest to India and long ruled by Great Britain is Burma, a country that gained its independence in 1948. Two great rivers flow through Burma, the Irrawaddy, almost through its center, and the Salween, which cuts across its eastern flank. On these rivers and their tributaries, the people of Burma depend for much of their livelihood. The Irrawaddy and the Salween are two broad natural highways through the often impassable mountains and tropical forests of Burma. Crafts, large and small, ply the waters, carrying people and goods to the many towns and villages along the banks of the rivers and their branches. Here, most of the houses are built with the products of the surrounding forests. Teakwood poles, bamboo walls, and rattan palm roofs. Many of the people who live in these villages work as boatmen, ferrying people across and up and down streams. This boat is made from a single giant log. Although rowing with the leg may seem difficult, the people in this part of Burma have been doing it for hundreds of years and can row for many hours without tiring. The rivers form fertile mountain valleys where great quantities of rice are grown. The rivers are not used for transportation alone. They provide water for drinking and cooking, fish to eat, and play an important part in the lives of the people. The Burmese people, who are very clean, bathe and wash their clothes along the banks. The clothes are first soaked, then beaten with paddles. The cool water feels good to Fungin and his son, since most of Burma has a very warm climate with two distinct seasons, rainy and dry. The fish net is always brought along on the days when the family visits the river. Although throwing the net looks easy, it requires a good deal of practice. If he's lucky, Bunjin will catch enough fish to last until the next trip down to the river. Fish are important in providing protein in the diet, which consists almost entirely of rice. Bunjin and his family have their own small rice field, or paddy. When it is harvest time, everyone helps, because for the people of Burma, rice is the staff of life, their most precious commodity since they so completely depend upon it for their existence. Some of the rice is used to make a kind of rice milk. It is mixed with a few drops of water and then ground between two stones. While not as nourishing as real milk, which is difficult to obtain, the rice milk does make a fair substitute. At mealtime, the family gathers on the open porch of their house. Meals are taken at about 10 in the morning, 5 in the afternoon, and 9 at night. All meals consist mainly of rice, which is eaten with the fingers of the right hand. Bamboo grows wild and very quickly in the humid forests around Fungin's village. The trees grow in dense thickets with a great deal of foliage. Fungin and his neighbors use the bamboo to build houses and furniture and are even able to sell some of it. The foliage is trimmed from the trunk and made ready for use in anything from a house in Burma to a chair in your own backyard. The roof of Fungin's house is made from thatched palm leaves. 
He uses the tall bamboo grass from the forest to weave mats. These mats are used as the floor in his house. He takes pride in weaving them neatly and firmly. The thatch on the roof must be replaced at regular intervals since the hot sun and torrential rains tend to rot it. This is a job for the women of the house. The tropical forest provides nearly all that fungin requires with which to live. With the aid of his water buffalo, hard timber, which he has cut some time ago, is hauled to a pond. Here it is allowed to soak in water for an entire season. If the logs were not soaked, termites would quickly eat through them. They are then pulled out to be dried in the sun before being used or sold. The hard tropical wood serves them well. The loom is made from it. Fungin's wife weaves cloth for a lungi, which is the long skirt that both men and women wear. Every five days, the bazaar is held in the nearby town of Keng Tung. Here, Fungin is able to use the money from the sale of his surplus rice and forest products. Various foods, drugs, yarn, cloth and implements are sold in the bazaar. Many of the people come not only to buy, but to sell their products as well. Delicacies are tempting to the visitors. Fungin and his family cannot resist buying the fish cakes which are boiled in fat and wrapped in a palm leaf. It's pleasant for the family to stroll through the town on these market days and perhaps visit the Buddhist temple. The people of Burma are predominantly of the Buddhist religion. Shrines and temples can be found in all the towns and villages. Keng Tung is a very old town. This area of Burma is still ruled by an active prince called the Sobwaji. Many different tribes are gathered under his rule. Belong to the Ika tribe. They enjoy dancing in this circular formation for many hours at a time. The Shams have their own special dance. The costumes and movements represent birds and animals with which they are familiar and which they sometimes worship. The knife dance is performed only by the most skilled and respected men of the village. There is a good school in the town of King Tung where children learn English as well as Burmese. English was introduced into Burma when it was a British colony and is still spoken commonly among educated people. Not all of the children in Burma have a chance to go to school, but even so, the children of Burma are comparatively well off. The country is not overpopulated. These youngsters will find enough food to eat and jobs to work at. Nomadic tribes inhabit the tropical forest and mountain regions which are still inaccessible by road, rail, or river. They live for a time in one place and then move on to build a new village in a different location. Many of these tribes live far from government centers. It will take time and much effort to make them a part of the new Burmese society. The rainforests of Burma produce most of the world's supply of teak wood. The Burmese elephant has been trained to haul the heavy logs out of the forest to the rivers. Here they are tied together and towed to the mill by tug. There is such a large demand on the world markets for teak wood that there are not enough good trees to meet it. Men ride with the logs all the way to the mill to make sure that none break loose.
Here at the world's largest teak mill, the logs are measured individually for size and graded for quality. Teak is an extremely heavy, hard chips, railroad ties, and fine furniture in all parts of the world. Teak is one of Burma's chief exports, along with rice. Burma sells some of its rice to the more heavily populated areas of Asia, which cannot raise sufficient for themselves. The city of Rangoon is the capital of Burma. A fine modern airport serves the airlines of many countries. Rangoon is situated on one of the mouths of the Irrawaddy River and is Burma's principal seaport. From the docks of Rangoon, ships carry minerals, rubber, rice, and teak to markets abroad. And from abroad, ships bring in textiles, coal, machine. The city of Rangoon is crowned by the golden Shwedagon Pagoda, the most sacred house of Buddhist worship in all Burma. Since according to Buddhist doctrine, eternal merit is gained in building temples, Buddhists try to add to the glory of their shrines and the support of the many saffron-robed monks who are attached to them. The people of Burma are of different origins. Some are mountain tribes, some are Malays, others are Indian, Chinese, and mixtures of the three. But all are uniting in the work of building the new nation of Burma into a strong and stable country, able to provide a better life for its people and take its place among the other growing new nations of Southeast Asia.